first, uh, thank you for giving me the chance to be uh, with you today. It's the first time uh, that I'm coming to, to Russia, so I'm very happy to be here. So today uh, I'm going to discuss with you to give a sort of summary about how children understand emotions. Uh, and uh, I will try to, to show you that uh, Blaise Pascal, the philosopher, was wrong when he said that uh, the heart has uh, its reasons that uh, the, the, the reason doesn't know. So, um, yes, I, I will start by giving you a, a very short definition of uh, the concept of emotion understanding, and I'm going to introduce you to uh, a measure uh, which is used to assess emotion understanding, and then uh, I will give you some milestones in the development of uh, emotion understanding, and I guess uh, I will not have the time to, to present uh, uh, new data that uh, we have been collecting the, the last two, three years. So uh, if we start with the definition, when I, I say emotion understanding, I mean uh, the understanding that the child has of the nature, cause and consequences of emotions. That means basic emotion, complex emotion, uh, social emotion, self-reflective emotions uh, in the self and other people. The main function of uh, emotion understanding is to identify, explain, predict, and control emotions uh, in the self and other people. Uh, it can be considered uh, as the declarative dimension of uh, emotional competence or intelligence. Uh, uh, as you may know, the emotional competence or intelligence has at least two sides, uh, a procedural side, which is about uh, uh, feeling, expressing, recognizing and controlling and regulating the experience of emotion, and a more declarative side, which is the capacity to reflect and understand uh, emotions. Uh, emotion understanding is a, one of the big uh, uh, elements of uh, theory of mind. If you want, theory of mind is divided in two uh, dimensions. One is about the understanding of the cognitive side of the mind, and people use often the term theory of mind in the strict sense, and the other one is about the understanding of the emotional side of the mind, and then people use the term emotion understanding. Uh, there are other terminologies, um, and here's a bit a summary of what I've been trying to define. So when I say emotion understanding, I mean uh, the understanding that the individual has of the emotions of the other person, but also of his own emotions. There are many different ways to, to assess uh, emotion understanding. Today I'm going to discuss uh, just one. It's the test of emotion comprehension that uh, we developed together with uh, Paul Harris uh, from uh, Harvard University. So the, the tech, the test of emotion comprehension uh, in uh, its uh, second version assess 12 different components uh, uh, of emotion. It goes from the, the capacity of the child to understand, to recognize basic emotions just by looking at the, the face of people. So the child is capable to recognize uh, uh, emotions like happy, sad, angry, scared, uh, to the understanding of the impact of external causes on emotion, the impact, of the, the understanding of the impact of desires and beliefs and memories on emotion, but also the capacity to understand that we can regulate our feelings using cognitive, uh, uh, social, and uh, behavioral strategies. Also, the understanding between the appearance and reality of emotions, meaning that even if I'm smiling now, that doesn't mean that I'm feeling uh, uh, very happy and also uh, the understanding of mixed nature emotion, the fact that we can feel at the same time two different emotions with different violence. I'm very excited to be here today, but at the same time, I'm also uh, anxious. And understanding also of the impact of emotions uh, on cognitive performances and understanding of the impact of culture and religion on the emotional experience. So, you have to trust me, it's a very good test. Uh, it has been translated uh, in uh, 26 uh, languages so far, including uh, Russia by uh, uh, Sasha uh, Veraska. Uh, 
It's used by clinical institutions, research institutions, and uh, educational institutions. Uh, here are some examples of items uh, that, that we use uh, in the tech. So for example, you ask the child, uh, let's look at these four pictures, can you point uh, to the person who is feeling angry? And then the child doesn't have to speak, he, he, the child has just to point the, the, the picture he thinks is the best. Normally we have no letters, the, the letters they are when we ask the question to the audience. Another example is this one. Uh, the rabbit is eating a carrot, he likes carrot very much. Hiding behind the bush there is a fox. The fox is hiding behind the bush because the fox wants to eat the rabbit. And then you ask a classical theory of mind question. Does the rabbit know that the fox is hiding behind the bush? And then the child can choose between two possible answers. Yes, the rabbit knows. No, the, the rabbit doesn't know. So from the age of uh, four, five, the majority of the children understand the false belief uh, of the rabbit. But then when you ask them, and now tell me, how is the rabbit feeling? Uh, is the rabbit feeling happy, uh, angry, uh, no, angry, uh, all right, or, or scared? Although the majority of the children at the age of four or five are, are going to say the rabbit doesn't know that the, the fox is hiding behind the bush, still they are going to say that the rabbit is scared. So it's not before the age of six, seven that the majority of the children are going to recognize the impact of the false belief of the rabbit on the emotional uh, experience of the rabbit. So the, the, today when we are making a, a review of the literature, so now it's more than 30, 35 years of research on the development of the way the child understands emotion, uh, it's possible to say that there's a very clear development in the way the, the child understands emotion uh, between the age of two, three, and uh, 11, 12 years. That doesn't mean that before the age of two, three, there is no development, and after the age of 11, 12 years, there is no development. But at least between the ages of two, three, and uh, 11, 12, there is a very clear development, which goes from an understanding of the visible and superficial aspects of emotion to an understanding of more uh, uh, deeper and reflective and complex aspect of emotions. So here's a, an illustration where you have age, the level of emotion understanding. You can see that there is a very clear development with age uh, in the number of components that the child is able to understand. And uh, actually, it seems that there are three stages uh, in the development uh, of emotion understanding, three qualitative stages. Not only there is a quantitative uh, development in the number of components that the child uh, is able to understand, but there is also a qualitative change in this development. It goes from the understanding of very simple and superficial aspects of emotion to the understanding of more elaborate and complex components of emotions. I don't have the time to, to give you the detail, unfortunately. Uh, it seems that uh, this uh, development is quite universal. Uh, we have been conducting research in many countries. Uh, but uh, in one research that we conducted uh, with Quechua children in the Altiplano of Peru, we found a clear development but a delay in the development of emotion understanding. So, Although there is a very clear development uh, in the number of uh, components of emotion that the, the child is able to understand and the uh, qualitative organization in stages, uh, there are at the same time uh, typical individual differences. That means from a very early age, uh, children are different in the way they understand emotions. That means if you go to the kindergarten, some children at the age of two, three, during one hour, they are going to produce, for example, 20, 30 emotional terms, where other children, they are not going to pr uh, produce even one uh, emotional term. And these two groups of children, they are as talkative. That means it's not that one group is mute and the other one is speaking all the time. And these in individual differences, sorry, are uh, observable not only from an early age, but during the entire childhood uh, of the child. They are quite stable uh, across time. Then there is the question of the explanation of this development and individual differences. So today there are two big models, uh, one that we call the cognitive model and the other one the affective model. 
the two models, they recognize the role of the personality, characteristic, intellectual characteristic of the child and the, the, the family uh, of the child. In the first model, people are showing that uh, the language of the child, the syntax, the semantic, the pragmatic competences uh, of the child is a very good predictor of the level of emotional understanding of the child. They show also that uh, the narratives of the parents, especially of the mother, if the mother uh, has a, a rich vocabulary and if she's speaking frequently and in a coherent way about emotions uh, with the child, it has a positive impact on the emotional understanding of the child. At the same time, there are numerous studies showing that the emotional relationship uh, between the child and the mother is also a very good predictor of the child's understanding of emotion. For example, mothers who are sensitive and responsive to the emotional needs of the child are mothers who are at the same time uh, have a child with a good level of emotional understanding. And children who are uh, attached securely to, in a secure way to the mother, they are also children with the highest level of emotional understanding. Now I, I would like to, to conclude with the impact why it is important to look at uh, emotional understanding uh, uh, in children, because research shows that the way the child think, reflect, communicate uh, about emotion has an impact on the psychological well-being of the, 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 the child. Children who have a good understanding, for example, of the mixed nature of emotion, they have at the same time a higher self-esteem, lower level of anxiety, lower le level of depression, and they are also more resilient when they are exposed to, to trauma. Another group of research shows also that a good emotion understanding is a protective factor for interpersonal relationship. Children with a good level of emotion understanding are at the same time children with more friends who are more popular among other children, who are more capable to cooperate uh, with uh, other children and to resolve interpersonal conflicts. And now, lately, there are an increasing number of studies showing that uh, emotion understanding has also a direct impact on the school achievement of, of children, meaning children who have a good understanding of emotion are capable to regulate their emotions in a more efficient way, to deal with their anxiety in a more efficient way, and it has a positive impact on their attention and the deployment of uh, metacognition. How much seconds do I have left? Okay. Uh, then I will jump. Yep. Yes, let's go for this one. Most of the, ch we are in Russia, so I, I, I guess uh, you, you are very much in favor of cooperation between children to, to resolve uh, uh, problems uh, at school. And actually, most of the research are showing that when the child is trying to resolve a problem with another child, then it has a positive impact on the school achievement of the child. But that's not the case for all the children. That means some children, they are taking more advantage than other children of the cooperative uh, setting. And actually, uh, uh, one of my PhD students, uh, uh, Karine Viana, she showed that it was related to the level of emotion understanding. Here you have the performances of the children when they are trying to resolve uh, the, the task alone, and here the level of emotion understanding. And you can see that there is no relation between the level of emotion understanding and the performances when they are trying to resolve the problem alone. The problem is not super complicated. It's not really a source of anxiety. Whereas here you have the performances of the children while trying to resolve the problem together with another child. And what we can see is that the children with a low level of emotion understanding, they don't take advantage of the situation. Whereas the children with a high level of emotion understanding, they really take advantage of the, the collective situation. So the children who are capable to read the emotions, their own emotions and the emotions of the other child are taking more advantage of the problem solving situation. And I would like to finish with that. Uh, there, there is an increasing number uh, of research showing that it's possible to help children 
to improve their emotion understanding, not only at school, but also at the kindergarten. So here's the, the results of, of a research that we conducted uh, in France and Canada, where we uh, try to promote emotion understanding uh, in children using the philosophy for children of uh, Lippmann as a theoretical background. It was a mixture between Lippmann's approach and the step-by-step -step, uh, approach. And you can see that actually the intervention uh, was uh, efficient. That means it's possible to help children to improve their emotion understanding at the kindergarten. So if I had to conclude the, 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 the talk, what I would say is that Pascal was wrong in the sense that uh, children are capable to understand, to reason uh, on their emotions and the emotions of other people. And this understanding increases with age, both qualitatively and quantitatively. And it has an impact not only on their psychological well-being, on their social relationships uh, with other children and adults, but also on their school achievement, meaning that we should promote the development of emotion understanding at school and at the kindergarten. Spasiba. Thank you.